Hello and welcome to a rather grey but blustery Sydney Harbour for the seventh heat of the JJ Giltman 18 foot skip championship brought to you by the winning group and a very good breeze out of the nor'east today for this race one race only today and we've got reached a very interesting stage on the point score um, oh, this morning um, the protest against Tech 2 uh, was successful in favour of uh, appliances online so Tech 2 was registered as a, a retirement so that will make things very difficult for her in the overall point score remembering that she also was disqualified from the second heat after she got too close to a ferry so I'll just before I introduce our guests and talk about the weather I'll just go through the point score this now is after six races and with a drop so it, it's starting to mean a little bit now so we've got Smeg, a clear leader on 10 points, Yandu on 19, Burden Bear 21, Noakes Sailing 25, Shore and Partners 26, equal with Andu, then follows Tech 2 on 30 points, uh, Yandu 9th, the Oak Double Bay 10, the Kitchen Maker 11, Appliances Online 12, Noakes Blue 13, Birkenhead Head Point Marina 14, 15th is Rag and Famish, 16th Queenslander, 17th Vintech, 18 Lazarus Capital Partners, 19 Ilvi, 19 Ilvi and 20 Lumix. So good afternoon, I'm Peter Shipway and joining me in commentary today, Adrian Kahalan, one of Australia's foremost, or if not foremost, lady sailors, round the world Yachtsman, Sydney Hobart winner, 12 foot skiff sailor, an 18 foot skiff sailor. So Adrian, welcome. What do you think about the weather today? Well, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's sort of setting up for the next few days of uh, nor northerlies really. We've got a high in the Tasman and that's going to push northerly winds along the coast for the next for today and the next couple of days. And uh, so the next sort of change in wind direction probably won't be until Sunday when a southerly comes through. So it, it, it's an interesting course. This is the Nor'east course. Many, many uh, people throughout decades have sailed this course. So uh, the tide today, it's um, basically low at start time so and then high um, this evening. So that means that at least the seaway won't be as bad today. It'll be a bit flatter water, which makes a big difference up at the top of the course in that Nor'easter because it is forecast to be 10 to 15, reaching 15 to 20 this afternoon. So it's already up in the 15, but I can see a lot of holes on the course at the moment. So it will be a lot about picking those lanes of breeze as uh, until it actually fills in up above 15 to 20. Okay, well, all skiffs on their small number two rigs. And our other commentator today is Andrew Buckland, multiple JJ winner. Andrew, talk us through uh, the Tech 2 situation where there's a, a collision in the fourth heat with appliances online and the decision that the jury reached this morning. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've read the uh, findings um, and I guess sequentially and, and most importantly, the first finding they made was that Tech 2 had completed their attack when the collision occurred. But the second uh, point of the facts found was that appliances, and it bears on a couple of things, appliances online had attempted to alter course to avoid a collision, but had f had not been able to do so, which is about as strange a finding as you can possibly imagine. And um, you know, in one of these boats, if you if you move the the wooden thing that steers it, or the carbon thing that steers it, they respond, you know, immediately. And so, I'm a bit puzzled by that part of the findings because, if for example, the collision wasn't so severe. Tech 2 has a good history of doing penalty turns, and if they thought they'd infringed, they historically have done penalty turns. But a, the impact, and multiple impacts evidently, was sufficient to break the outside wing bar, so they couldn't either do a penalty turn or continue the race. So Tech 2 has actually grounds for further appeal, which they intend to do in relation to that, those findings. And in all probability, um, you know, one more round of appeals and, and things may alter in relation to that race. Okay, well, right at the moment, um, the decision was that Tech 2 retired from race four, so there's no further penalty applies. Appliances online was to be awarded redress for the race, being scored points equal to the average to the nearest tenth of a point 
of her points in all races in which she finished to date except the race in question. So that's the situation at the moment and we're waiting starting signals. We're at the mouth of Double Bay. A lot of uh, white caps up the track as Adrian was saying but at the moment there's very few boats on the race track as far as spectator boats or cruising boats so it's a nice long runway adrian up to the weather mark isn't it yeah it's a weekday racing on sydney harbour is fantastic because you just don't have the traffic issues you've got an open course you can actually rather than sail the traffic which you often have to do on the weekends you can in fact develop a bit of a strategy look for a nice lane on the side that you actually want to go and um just noting today, it's a nor nor'easterly, not sort of a, a east nor'easterly. So probably, as you've often seen, you may end up seeing the the, um, the crews head over to Bradley's Head to start off and see if they can pick up those shifts up on the northern side of the harbour. Okay, well, there's the winning group. They're currently second on the point score. And they're a fair way adrift. They're nine points short of Smeg, who have really been the consistent performer They've had uh, two wins, two seconds, a fourth and a sixth. So they're dropping the sixth at the moment. Remember, nine heats and you can drop your worst performance. So the seventh heat today, a lay day tomorrow, and then heats eight and nine on Saturday and Sunday. So we're still waiting on signals from the committee boat. There's Shore and Partners. They've been fifth on the points list at this stage. They had a reasonable day yesterday, two fifths in the, in the two races. Young crew. Jim Colley and Sean Connor and Harry Bethway. Well, Andrew, um, what have you made of the last few races and what do you think today? Who will this breeze favour with all skiffs on their number two rigs? Well, Pete, um, what we've seen, I guess, is, you know, Smeg regaining at least reasonable form from having some configuration issues with their number one rig. So that got them that sixth place in the second heat where they look pretty uncomfortable and really struggling. Um, but low range second sail, um, Tech 2 will pro be expected to win this. Finport and Smeg and winning group very close, very close for second, third, fourth. And, and that should be the top four, I, I would expect. So it's a fairly long course today. You've got to keep it together. Um, it's a three laps. Uh, first lap is up to the top of the harbour, what they call the Bishal Boy, and then out around Shark Island. And one of the things that is really crucial in that is picking that jibe into to lay Shark Island, particularly in this northerly breeze, whether you leave the jibe absolutely to the latest or where, and that often depends on who you're next to as well. Uh, so the first lap is a tr so effectively a, a triangle and then uh, a dog leg from the Bishop Boy back to the um, bottom mark and then the last lap a triangle again up to the Bishop Boy, round Shark Island and down to the finish. So you know, it's, a, it's a pretty long race this one and uh, I always found it can be quite, um, you know, you've really got to concentrate the whole time because there's gains and losses, particularly right to the last minute along this uh, double bay or Point Piper shore um, down here to the finishing line. Okay, well, the five minutes just been declared. We've got 4.40 to go. Andrew, the line, what are your thoughts on the line? The line looks delicious, Pete. Delicious, I'd say. It's an interesting word, but uh, let's put it in sailing terms. Um, I'd say it's spot on, and it still will favour the starting at the pin, just. Okay, the breeze is a bit up and down, Adrian, isn't it? There's a few little puffs coming down that are probably, you know, 15... 14, 15, but there's, as you said earlier, there's a few soft spots in the in the wind. Yeah, it's sometimes it's hard to, when they forecast for 15 to 20 knots later in the afternoon, it's sometimes when you're sitting here on the start line, you you can't really imagine that it's going to get that uh, high, but still, we never know. Um, it might get up there. I noticed recently, you know, some of the models have been having some difficulty capturing the actual true wind speed in the harbour, so... We'll see if they're right today. Adrian, it's probably difficult for it to build, uh, you know, only in relation to, um, you know, gradient compression because, you know, it's not hot, is it? It's only the water's 23 and the, you know, the, the tarmac out at Canterbury is, you know, only 24 today, you know. So there's no thermal and there's no um, incipient, you know, at, that, at high levels, no flow 
counter flow to take the to to allow convection to occur. So the two things that Roger Batham always told us we had to wait for, you know, some some thermal gradient and some incipient southwesterly flow up high don't exist, according to the model I was looking at anyway. Well, well. Not sure what the tarmac at Canterbury is happening out there, but we're on Sydney Harbour with three minutes to go. And the sky uh, was quite clear an hour or so ago, and now it's clouded over. And Adri Adrian might be give us a quick prognos prognosis on what that means. Anything, Adrian? Well, I think, you know, you, you, you're in a fairly small, you know, micro area here. And I, I think that, you know, whether you get any lifts or knocks off the clouds, I think that would be a little bit hard to... To anticipate, I'd, if it was me out there today, I'd go with an overall strategy. Uh, really looking for those lanes of wind, that wind, particularly in that run, you know, just to make sure you never fall out. Because if someone just gets a little gust and goes, you know, just gets that little lane where they stay in it, do a, execute a nice dive into Shark Island. With these boats, you know, you accelerate so quickly and there's so much ground to be made up just by being in two or three knots wind. So I, I have to admit, because it's a fairly steady gradient, I'd probably be looking for pressure today. Okay, just coming up to two minutes, and I would say, Andrew, the race to Bradley's on as usual, wouldn't it? First to Bradley's. The, the best three minutes of sailing there is, Pete, I reckon. Yes. <laughs> and tough, 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 tough. And favours the people that can have got a good high slow mode, and probably the two boats that do that best are um, Finport and uh, Tech 2. Well, the fleet, is, with a minute 40 to go, uh, well back, but all majority are at the committee boat end. They're all ganged up down there. The Shore and Partners and Noakes sailing are in the midline. And our old friend, the Bird and Bear, will he be going for the pin again? And Ilve's down there, but Bird and Bear, for the last four races, has gained the pin. And he's coming down behind the fleet on port. You can see him there. And, and Pete, furthest right, Finport. Okay, minute six to go, coming up. There they are, starting to line up. There's the minute to go. And race seven. Today is the Bill Miller Memorial Trophy. Bill was Commodore from the club from 65 to 88, made a life member in 1958. And his grandson, Mitch Miller, a big follower of our live stream. So welcome to you, Mitch. And your grandfather was certainly a great contributor to the 18-footers with 35 minutes, 35 minutes, 35 seconds to go. Sponsors yeah, the spo sponsors today are the Royal Oak Hotel Double Bay. Here they stack up is now. We've got 18 seconds to go. Finport will get the committee boat. Just starting to put the foot down. 10 seconds. Oh. Snokes and Shore and Partners down to pin. They're early. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Could wow. be a, a general or individual here. They're away. Yandu and Finport up at the windward end. Committee just looking on the boat what they're going to do. No recall. They've let them go. I think we're clean. Well, that's Finport's gift for the day, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, Christmas has come early for the Yeah, that's right. It. Christmas came early for a couple of boats. Anyway, they're the race committee. They've got the job to do. All clear. The start is all clear. Up the windward end is Finport. We're down the leeward end. We can see Shore and Partners. And above him, Noakes sailing. Above him, the Burden Bear with the Red Bear. And then just in front of him and above Noakes is the winning group. Majority of the fleet off on starboard towards Bradley's head. And Shore and Partners went down there and took the pin and um, they stayed quite a long way below the bottom of the fleet there. They obviously wanted um, to get to Bradley's head first. Interestingly, um, Yan Du with John winning, Fang Warren and Mike Kennedy, they uh, came in a little late at the boat end, but actually they don't seem to have done too badly out of that. No, they're just fighting to hold their lane there on Finport is slowly trying to come round their bow. Breeze is nice, it's 14 knots, I would say. Smeg and Tech 2 standing out from the middle of the pack. And, but we're on shore and partners. So, Pete, the, the water just a little bit bumpier than, than you might think, given that the tide theoretically at least has turned. 
Well, I know that uh, on Shore and Partners you've got Harry Bethwaite and he will have listened to his dad talk around the dinner table every night about Bradley's Head and the North East course. So I'm sure he's probably got the strategy in his mind what needs to be done on this course and particularly in a North North Easterly. Um, Harry sails with us offshore actually and um, he's a great trimmer. So he'll be a real asset to Shore and Partners today along with the other experience they've already got on board in Jim Colley and Sean Connor. Shore and Partners about 50 metres short of Bradley's head. Get on that leading group in a moment. Shore and Partners will be first to Bradley's. He's got a bit of a wriggle to come out of there. Noakes just above him. Okay, here he goes. That's Noakes. Noakes will cross. And then his next problem will be the winning group. They're just a bit above the lighthouse, both Noakes and winning group. Winning group's tacked away, so that's a good lane for Noakes sailing to come back in. They go now. So Noakes, Brook Shore and Partners, they've all decided to take this northern shore. Uh, that will help too with getting out of the tide. The tide's coming in now. That's uh, another strategical part of getting up to the top mark. So there's Noakes going behind Smeg, who's done very, very well from the middle of the line. Smeg would be close to the lead. See Noakes going back behind him on port. First boat he'll come to will be Andu. He's across Andu and then Tech 2. He's across Tech 2. Winning group, Shore and Partner standing out to the middle of the harbour. Who do you like at the moment, Andrew? Well, the boats that started the windward end didn't get any favours as usual. Um, Tech 2 is probably the fastest VMG right now. A little bit more breeze here, Adrian. Probably 15 knots. Yeah, it seems to be a, a filled in up at this end of the course, actually. It was just down around the start line. It seemed it would be a little bit light. Um, what do you think about the guys who started at the boat end, do you think they've got a way out or do you think they've got to go back right back across to the other side of the course? Yeah, it's interesting to know. Yandu was in the, now in the middle of the pack. I don't know where Finport ended up out of that, but <laughs> meanwhile the fleet, the majority of them are going in towards Taylor Bay. Yeah. Fin, Finport's dead to lure to know it's probably about oh, there he is. 30 it's metres in arrears. Shore and Partners and Winning Group look strong. They're a fair way up to windward here. That's Yandu in the background, winning group in the foreground, and then up ahead of them is Noakes sailing, to lure to them Finport. And just off Noakes bow is Birkenhead Point Marina. So we're into Taylor Bay. Speg is the most lured boat, but he's the most advanced in the bay. And I, think, I think the order coming out might well be Smeg and Tech 2, even with Noakes. So there's Andu um, in Taylor Bay there, mixing up with Tech 2. On um, Andu, there's uh, two brothers, Cam and Charlie Gundy, and Cam's on, on Andu. He's a great sailor, 12 foot skiff sailor from down at Lane Cove. So um, he, he'll bring great experience to the crew as well. His brother Charlie on the Oak Double Bay, they're not on screen at the moment. But Andu, Marcus Ashley Jones is back at the helm after the birth. Had a baby, or his wife had a baby yesterday. And all good apparently. Just holding off Tech 2. Smeg coming across now. Oh, it's going to be tight, Smeg, Andu, and Tech 2. We're on the rag and famish. But here's the cross. Tech 2 coming up to Smeg. Smeg will be clear ahead. Wow. Tech 2 and Andu. So T Smeg leads by one and a half boat lengths, Pete. <clears throat> the next cross will be on Noakes sailing. Unless Noakes leads. <laughs> Noakes yeah, leads. Noakes leads. How well, about that? Well, the next one is winning group. Yeah. I think, he's, I think he's across, isn't he? Smeg's got to negotiate. You'll see the winning group on starboard coming into the picture now. 
No winning group might be in front of him, eh? Yep. Yeah, no doubt then from Smeg. So the middle looks like it might have paid a little bit there. Yeah, and he's got another one to go here, Smeg, with Shore and Partners. Yeah. So he's had to take a few sterns there. So he had to duck Shore and Partners. So Shore and Partners, the winning group. And then Noakes and then Smeg, uh, Tech 2 and Andu are now coming off the point. Well, it's interesting now, you know, from the start. So Finport started right at the boat end and Shore and Partners started right at the pin end. So, you know, they've all come together. The pun usually wins, Adrian, yeah? Yeah. Well, there doesn't appear to be um, too many people taking the east side of the course or the southern shore, along the eastern suburb shore, we call it. It's always nice flat water up in here in Taylor Bay too, which helps a lot with taxing. Interestingly, Andrew, uh, Smeg's going right out into midstream now. He's left the fleet. Yeah, well, I, you know, I didn't look like there was any loss in, in, you know, not going to the left edge. See, the other thing too is sometimes if you get caught up and you can't get a lane, you just need to clear yourself. You know, tax is so expensive in terms of, you know, if you don't do a good one, sometimes you just take a little leg out, clear your air and then get back to the favoured side. So, Tech 2 now biting the bullet and going to, in the direction of the smeg. Smeg's done very well out here. That's the group still going and starboard in towards Chowder Bay. Smeg very close to the lead. He came off... Uh, out ahead then went about three or four hundred meters out into the midstream and the stern he had to take a few sterns to get out there but he looks at the moment to have done a, a pretty nice job but there'll be a, a few boats coming out of chowder bay on port that'll make things interesting see how they go but here's tech two but pete here's the thing i think gradient nor'easter it's not funneling these guys have the benefit of a you know to some degree the low ground of Watson's Bay and the slightly enhanced breeze and slightly right-handed breeze coming via Watson's Bay more or less. So that's why the middle has paid to some degree here it seems. And middle to right. Well, I think Tech 2 saw how good Smeg did now. He's going hard right yep. into Nielsen Park with Andu yep. and Shore and Partners. The breeze, nice 14, 15 knots here. It's always a nice breeze when you can, 14, 15 knots, you can just lie back on trapeze, settle in, get the right height. Uh, those, actually they're trapezing, all, a couple of crews are trapezing quite low today, but it's, it's always nice to just with this breeze, you can lengthen out, get settled. Whereas if you're tacking, 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 or your two, two and a half strings can be quite frustrating. There's a big fleet now going out into midstream, led by Smeg. Well, they shouldn't have to worry about the tide now because they're up on the bank, so um, they wouldn't... They're, they're too, they're, for those that don't know Sydney Harbour, there's two shipping channels that run down either side, and it's a very tactical thing, certainly like, for example, the start of the Sydney Hobart, whether you go in the Western Channel or the Eastern Channel. But because the, um, the, the mark, um, the Beachel Boy is up on the bank between the two channels, um, the tide should, shouldn't play a strategic role coming up to the top mark there. But it certainly does around Bradley's and those said. There's Smeg way in the background. You can see the boats that have gone into the right. Shore and Partners and do. Tech 2 took a little bite up, but it didn't look too good when he came back at them. No, no, he was struggling there, Pete. Not sure what was going on. <coughs> and is right in on Nielsen Park, as is Shore and Partners coming up on a nice right hand up. Smeg's just played the middle of the course the whole way up well, since the, the way, start. Yeah, the way the point scorer is at the moment, he really doesn't have to take any risks, Smeg. He's just got to keep things cool, keep it well bolted down, and uh, just maintain that good lead that he's got on the points table as he leads this group going back into the middle of the harbour, and then the only two that are, would threaten him at the moment are the ones that went hard right. You can see them in the distance coming up the Nielsen Park shore, 
and do leads that from Shore and Partners. A few white, more white caps here as we approach the weather mark. We're probably about two thirds of the way up the first beat to Bishal Boy. Given it's the third last day of the regatta, do you think there's any races within the races started yet, or do you think that's for the weekend? I think they're probably not. Well, I don't think so. Andrew, you wouldn't think that's the case, is it? I think it's just a matter of spec keeping their nose clean. Yeah, no. Saturday's the first day where they might pay some attention to an individual boat. So it looks like the order will be Speg, Shore and Partners and Do. Winning group, possibly fourth. OK, well, there's our today's race sponsor, the Royal Oak Hotel. And they're not far out of it either, are they? So Andrew's currently in sixth place overall. So if they get a good race, this will be a good uh, score for them to for them, solidify yeah. their place in the top. So Smeg, Smeg will lead. Oh, and four points. Jack's on the lured edge. Shaw and Partners are leading the sandwich, Pete. Tech 2 is well back. It'll be about 10th or 11th, I would think, at this weather mark as they're approaching the Bishal Boy up near Sound Peaks on Sydney Harbour. The good thing about this Norris course is there's a lot of sailing, so <laughs> there's a lot to happen between this Bishal Boy and the finish. So And always um, tricky down the side of Shark Island Yeah. to get the, down to the jibe and the totem pole. But we're on speak. Michael Coxon, Ricky Bridge... Trent Barnabas, they've been here, done it before. Michael Coxon, the 2017 JJ champion. It's the Western Channel wedding cake, you can see in the background, top screen. And what's the breeze here, Adrian? It's down, isn't it? It is actually, I would say that was only about 12 or 13 knots. So um, this, is a, this is interesting, again, where I, I, if it was me, I'd you can see on the sound peaks, the tide's still pretty, you know, very much low. So just looking for those lanes of wind once you get around that top mark, mm. where are you going to go? So what's gone wrong with Tech 2, Andrew? I don't know. He, I think he went the wrong way a bit and he didn't go very fast after he, he tacked in not much wind for a while there, I think. But um, mm. he's certainly not the fastest up here, but no. We're just watching Speg come up to the ley line any second. There they go. And Noakes has made a good fist for the, off the other shore. Yeah, a few big splits. Anyway, Smeg will round first. And we've got the Oak Double Bay. Ragging. Smeg leads. Just about 14 minutes after the start, so quick beat. Here comes Noakes in second spot. They've been, except for yesterday's second race, they've been pretty consistent. Fourth on the point score. Noakes around. Oh, there's some starboard tackers coming in here. Port tackers. Okay. The Royal Oak around the outside of Shore and Partners. Next will be winning. And they're, strugg they're struggling a bit also, aren't they? Oh, well. Andrew, the new father, Marcus Ashley Jones. Appliances online. Simon Nern, the kitchen maker. That's Jordan Gertis. Yep. With Lachlan Doyle and Tom Quigley. Oh. And there's the burden. Uh, yeah, we're just going to watch the next boat round will be Tech 2. So he's in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ninth position. And so a little group of them, Pete, Finport and Tech 2, that did something a little different over on the, on the, uh, on the eastern shore have really suffered. Well, he went halfway up Tech 2, then came back in, in the middle and didn't look any good, and he went back again, and it really hurt him. So he's a minute behind the leader. There's Yandu going round. Yeah, Yandu start, came in a, a little bit late at the boat, and uh, they got forced out to staying on that sort of eastern, eastern suburb shore. And from then on, I think they struggled to find a lane after that, and that kept them down the back of the pack. Rag and Famish Hotel, they, they've just gone around the top mark as well. That's Birkenhead Point going around now. But uh, Rag and Famish with Anthony Young, Cameron McDonald and Phil Harmer, well, there's certainly plenty of offshore experience on that boat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not much help today out here. But <laughs> yeah. And on Birkenhead Point, there's Tim Westwood, Alex Chittenden and Felix Daviero.
So most of the boats have elected to go over to the eastern shore, which they obviously decided there was enough wind on the eastern shore to jive then off Nielsen Park. Now the leaders are going to starboard and uh, Smeg and do, you can see them coming now into that jive point on the east, eastern suburb shore. And on our screen now we've got Noakes Blue, that's a bit heritage. Yvette's had a reasonable regatta, she's currently sitting in uh, 12th place. There's a good gaggle of boats here, winning group's going to cross a few here. But Smeg had led them off Steel Point out to the jibe, winning going in on board. Here's come Tent 2 will just be behind them. So winning group actually jived a bit early. I think you've got, you've got to be careful coming in under this Nielsen Park here. If you notice Smeg, who's not on screen at the moment, but they went a long way, um, almost what you would say, past the ley line of Shark Island. But you'll see probably here that uh, they'll start to get lifted up into that bay there. So it'd be, uh, be interesting to see if winning group did actually jive and also Shore and Partners a touch early. Yeah, you would think so. They look where they're going. It looks quite soft. Yes. As you say, Smeg's gone much further out. He looks on a pretty nice line there, but it, it looks get a like few squirrely puffs down the side of the island. But here's a great shot of it. It always it, looks like you're not going to make it, but yeah. in this north nor'easterly, it's what has to be done. There's a great group shot. Royal Oak Four Pine then Andu and Noakes Blue. Tech 2 just getting rolled by Noakes Blue. So the race is on to the totem pole and Smeg leads. If he can lay down the side of the island, he would have extended his lead for sure. Oh. Wow, and Noakes a little overstood, Pete. He's got a bit on Sean Langman down this side of the island. Well, this is maybe where he just needs to let the, shoot, the spinnaker go for a minute. Just wait for the gust to go through and then um, go back again. But Sean's done this many times before. He'll know what to do. Oh, he's fully wicked up here. He's, he's coming to Smeg too quite quickly. Smeg's run into a soft spot. For a moment he wasn't laying down, but now he's... It had to heat right up. You can see Noakes flying at him. I think Noakes will hit a similar uh, Yeah, Pete, Smeg, Smeg so. there in VMG mode, so they're trying to now stay deep and and, and uh, VMG towards the mark. Noakes possibly can gain a little more here. Tech 2 and, yeah, not on screen, sorry guys. Tech 2 and uh, Royal Oak further back up the track, taking the odds to it under at Nielsen Park, not doing too well. Funny how it's lifted off though, isn't it? And that's a bit of northerly, Adrian, yeah? Yes, that's that's the reason why you've got to jibe till you think you're not going to make it. Yeah. Leave the jibe till you think you're not going to make it. That's right. We judge that pretty well, Smeg, the yeah. jibe angle. But Noakes has made a game, Pete, I yeah, think, hasn't he? He has. Yep. Yep. And look at him. He's just got there. another puff. Noakes. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the role of um, the, the main sheet hand is so important down these runs, just to be looking over your shoulder, looking at those lanes of wind. You know, if you see one go inside, you maybe take a jibe, step down in it. You know, the, it's, a, it's a real, really big team effort here. You know, you've got the, some steerers sit just inside the wing. Most people are three stringing today. Um, but that main sheet hand, I've always felt that they carry a very important role down these runs. Just spotting yeah, the wind. The main sheet hand's best place to judge the jibe angle. And uh, so some boats, the skipper does it, but most of the boats now, the main sheet guy calls the jibe angles downhill. Very soft here at Shark Island. Pretty warm, Pete, yeah. and soft and spiky. Tech 2 in a bit of trouble further back up there. Yeah, 
Tech 2 dropped further back. Yeah. And, but he's, he's just come out the back of a big puff. Right at the totem pole here at Shark Island. It'd be lucky to be eight knots a win. The puffs are coming down very rarely at the moment. And the fleet are running away in soft pressure. You can you just, see there that big hollows in this wind. We just saw the bird and the bird and bear. Um, James Doran, John Walton and Tom Clout go across screen. They're currently sitting in third position overall. So they'd probably be disappointed with being back down at, at the bottom of the fleet in this race. They need a good one here to keep their spot up at the top of the table. Well, they jived early and there's not much wind. No, and there's a bit of good wind coming well, for them, Pete. Here they go. So that's them now. on screen just now. So yep. Bird and Bear, they're yeah. sitting third overall. Yeah, they're just coming into a nice puff if they can get it. Yep, they've got it. The last a bit of a time for them also. They're running down on the face of it. Is that your stationary rolling puff, Bucko, perhaps? It's got a bit of that about it, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. That's what we like. So Ando's had a, a good race again this race. Um, the, their scorecard, they've had two fours, eight, two, eight, ten. So they've been relatively consistent, always in the top ten. And uh, they're sitting sixth overall. So this will be a good place for them if they can maintain that. They're currently fifth in this race. There's Andu there. And Andu just Marcus Ashley Jones, Cam Gundy and Geronimo Harrison. So just enough north in the breeze, a no jive link to the bottom here. <clears throat> or perhaps, yeah, they're just slowing. So that island you can see in front of you, for those that are not from Sydney Harbour, that's Clark Island and uh, the city in the background. No one lives on Clark Island, it's just a place where you can go for a picnic if you want to on a Sunday afternoon and watch the 18 footers go around the bottom mark. Two little jibes for Smeg. Smeg, jibe, he won't quite lay it, so he's got a little short one in. Only be about a, a 10 second run on this leg and then he'll jive again. Jive drop, Pete. Here he goes. It'll be a jive and then a drop. Noakes is going to have to do the same manoeuvre. And and now the breeze, they're going to be round in very good pressure. They're around. Great job. Yeah, there's a good job from the forehand hand there because uh, it looked like it was all left to him yeah, in that. Trent Barnabas and Ricky Bridge. They're on their way to Bradley's head for the second beat. Noakes, still a bit of work to do. They're about 15 seconds behind. And then Shore and Partners, the consistent Shore and Partners, will be third, just dropping their red spinnaker. Winning group are coming in on port, and they will be fourth. So that was Josh Paul Besky dropping the spinnaker there on Noak Sailing. Okay, Shore and Partners around. And very tidy too, Pete. <laughs> yeah, that was Harry Bethwaite. Did his dad Good Julian be proud of that drop? <laughs> Tidier than most of Julian's drops. <laughs> <laughs> Julian's not here to defend himself on that. I sailed with Julian in the, in the Nationals in the 18s and he did a great job. And that was on Moreton Bay where it's very rough. For some of you that might not know, um, Julian Bethway had sailed the two-handed 18-foot skiff back in the 80s where it was 30-foot wings. It's not for the faint-hearted. No. <laughs> Long way side to side. And around. So he'll be fifth. Well, the bird and the bear have come out well out of that. They weren't looking good at the top mark. But no, they weren't. They weren't in the top ten. But they took a little um, jibe in under Shark Island, which we thought might have meant that they lost the wind, but they yeah. got this beautiful lane of wind across to the point well, Piper Shore. Now there's a, a good gaggle of boats as the kitchen maker leads this group round. Noakes Blue, a vet, done a nice rounding. John Winning Senior getting round on Yandu. And then Tech 2 will be next. Boy, they dropped back. Yeah, they went the wrong way under Nielsen Park, Pete. So 
Yeah, definitely Yandy, John Winning, Fang and Mike Kennedy, they they sailed well down that run, so they've caught up a number of places because they're in the last few around the top mark. And the Royal Oak got lost down there too. He was in the top few at the Bichel boy. But anyway, they're on the win. Oh, there's a bit of drama now as it's Pliance is online. Simon Nern, inside him, Vintech. <laughs> Vintech are going to go to Windward with the Spinnaker still up. Not recommended. Just getting it down now. And Birkenhead Point Marina. Follow them. So that's Felix Daviero dropping the shoot on Birkenhead Point Marina. And here comes the Queenslander. Dave Hayter, Ben Roxburgh and Elliot Maher. Ben Roxburgh's father, Angus Roxburgh. Former Sydney Hobart winner with uh, Michael Spees in 2003. And Spees, a former winner of the JJ Giltons. I know he's watching from the, his palatial pad up in the Gold Coast. He tells us how much he's been enjoying the coverage. So shout out to him. Here come the tail enders around the mark. Lazarus, Ilve and Lumix, the Queenslander. So it doesn't appear that um, anybody's taking any risks here going out to the east side of the course. Everybody's headed straight over to Bradley's. The breeze is down, Adrian, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is. It's lucky to be 12 knots here, is it? Or 12, 13 knots. So no one's disadvantaged by the rig because they've all got number two rigs on. It's not as though someone's sticking out with a number one rig, but I think it's still a number two rig, Andrew, wouldn't it be? Yeah, just, just getting towards the low end of the range. There's still... You know, full riding moment in use here. You know, the big rig probably would now be faster on the run, but slightly slower upwind. But if it goes, the breeze drops any further, it's a bit problematic. But as you observe, it's about adaptation because they're all on number twos. All the fleet rounded that uh, Lewin Market Clark on and now standing into. Bradley's head. The tide will be gaining a bit more strength as the day goes on. Yandu just tacking. She took the low road across there. She was behind a lot of to lure a lot of boats, so he drove off for a bit of boat speed. There's the kitchen maker and the burden bear. Burden bear will cross ahead. So I'm um, not on screen at the moment, but coming down the course shortly you might see the Manly Ferry come into view so they might uh, mix things up a bit. It's, it's been renamed Adrian the dreaded Manly Ferry okay. Well that's a beautiful shot of Sydney Harbour there I mean it's very very clear day so the skiffs have got plenty of room to go where they want to with their tactics. And the boys on Andu. Uh, talk to us about this, Andrew. Uh, Speg went right up to Bradley's. Now he's gone right across to Shark Island. Wow, uh, weak flood and less tax. Pete, that'll do, won't it? Nice and simple. He's got a comfortable little cushion. He has got a nice lead. That's him now. You can see the lighthouse. Just to the right of the lighthouse is Speg. That's the winning group, obviously, in the foreground. And then behind him, no sailing, who have tacked to lured of Speg. They would still be second. It's a beautiful shot there of the winning group. You can see all three crew just lying back perfectly, all very settled, their heads perfectly on line. Skipper barely touching the helm at all. The main sheet, you know, just just in and out. It's so important that that balance of, uh, of of the boat that, you know, it's just kept totally flat there. I mean, it's it's perfect to watch. And the winning group have got so much experience on there with um, John Winning Jr., Seve Jarvin and Sam Newton. Um, Sam Newton, obviously, has done so much across the range of different different disciplines with offshore America's Cup. He's certainly a fine sailor and in great company with uh, Sevi Jarvan and again as Sevi Jarvan heard plenty of ways to win races from his dad around the dinner table as well great moppy
So the winning group are currently in second place overall. And uh, they've got three, one, three, eight, 13 and four. So their drop at the moment is 13. The race leader and the point score leader. They were laying in towards Chowderhead. They've tacked well short of that and coming back into the middle of the harbour again. Breeze up again, probably 13, 14 knots. Maybe topping out at 15. The winning group are going hard right. Speg just keeping a, a loose cover or close eye on them, I'm sure. looking at Smeg there, the, if, if the tide was coming in today, there'd probably be a lot more waves up at this end of the course, so it is nice that they've got some flat water there, Smeg, and being out in front with plenty of boat speed, they can go where they want, they're not restricted by trying to find a lane up the course, they look very comfortable. Way in the distance with the winning group still going in on port, just tacked then, and that's probably the distance... They would be probably third, the winning group, third or fourth. Noakes sailing, going on the western shore would be still second. Now how far does Smeg go here, Andrew? Well, you can't muck around. You've either got to be on the edge or not at all. So he's got to go, and he's, he's in a bit of a strange spot actually, given yeah, that. It looks soft where he's going. I don't think it'll be too long before he bails out. Yeah, no, he needs to jump out of there pretty shortly and maybe just take one more dig back to the point at Nielsen Park itself. So we're on the second lap of the course now. And uh, this, so this is just, we, we saw the first lap, which was a triangle. And the second lap, when they go around the top mark, they just go straight down to the bottom mark. So this is the second lap of the course. Big long VMG run. <clears throat> okay, winning group going back for more. Yeah, well, you then... can't muck around. Pete here, you know, you can lift in on port and then lift out on starboard as the wind bends around the point. Winning group having a shot at it. But I would think that the left shore will pay on this beat. Starting to see a bit more breeze uh, filling in down this eastern suburb shore now. There's a ferry in the background there. They've obviously decided to, our winning group decided to back this eastern suburb side and you can see the little lanes of wind coming down along that shore. So that's good alignment there from Winning Group now. That's um, as good as it gets, I think. Some good gusts coming around Steel Point where they're laying just short of. Yep. But Noakes, meanwhile, are right in Chowder Bay. Smeg right out in the middle of the harbour. So it's a three-way split. Andrew, in terms of the top four boats on the course today, are there any immediate, for the viewers at at home, whether are there any immediate differences that are significant between the setup of the top four boats today? Well, there's a fair bit of convergence going on, Adrian, as he usually is, you know. Yeah. Um, some differences in the areas, but not all that much, and some difference in the, obviously, in the um, jib depths in particular, but somehow or other, the fleet all goes nearly the same speed. Mostly, so and you, think you know, really the biggest difference is the um, tactics today, Andrew. Probably the jibs on Tech Two and uh, Finport are quite a bit flatter than the jibs on Winning Group and Smeg, for example. Thing is, no sail is closed right up on Smeg. See the cross coming shortly. Noakes so, looked as though he pulled behind him. Yeah, so, so, so Pete, with the breeze now bending left, it seems a little bit, the left shore might have worked for that piece of the beat. Well, it certainly did because Noakes was a fair way back. Yeah, he punched hard into Chowder Bay. Smeg sort of waddled up the middle. Went right at some stage, but then he came back to the middle, probably saw what was happening with Noakes. So he's just tacked now, Smeg up well on the hip of Noakes, going out on port. The winning group, meanwhile, have 
struggling to come off Steel Point and Andu, who's worked the left and middle, they've just pulled behind them, the winning group as well. Well, Andu's going pretty quick through the water, Pete, by the look of that. They are, absolutely. So Noakes and Sean, Sean's gone the traditional way in this breeze. He hit that yeah. northern shore um, and Smeg hit that eastern suburb shore, which you wouldn't normally do. Noakes is going to cross Smeg here. Okay, if we can get a shot of that, here we go. Noakes will oh, very yeah. the tag rights. Oh, it's oh, close. Smeg's not going to risk this, surely. No, no. no. Noakes no, has no the... need to do anything risky on the Smeg. So Noakes has been quick and he went the right way. So that if you go the right way and you've got a quick boat, you're in pretty good shape. Really, Pete? Did you experience that often? No. I... <laughs> no, I did it often. <laughs> but there's a nice shot on screen now to compare, see if there are any immediate, oh, so obvious yeah. differences between the setups. There. So, Adrian, have a look. Smeg's mainsail's a little bigger. Noak's carrying a bit more rake. The other aspects, the jib depth and so on, and the jib overlap's pretty similar. Both boats trimmed pretty solidly, as you'd expect. Look at that for Windward Hill. Well, this Hills is the uh, seventh heat of these championships and each each race all seven we've seen a very close battle at the top of the fleet it's been, there's no boat that's really stood out and had massive wins all the wins have been fairly narrow tech two's won a few races smegs won a few so um sean and notes they're currently sitting in fourth place overall sean. Yeah, they had a real wobble in yesterday's second race they just got lost up the first beat and rounded the weather mark in last position but they got themselves back a little bit but anyway i expect slightly quicker here andrew it's pretty marginal isn't it no no it's just, just sailing a little bit higher than, yeah he's gauging off them very slightly but just enough to keep breathing and i think you'll just sail up to the all the way to the ley line now on starboard and so on that basis notes if they can keep living there they could be able to lead here so the wind's a little bit more up at this end of the course, probably closer to 15 knots. They're not a struck match between those two boat speed, is there? Um, they're about uh, 100 metres or so from the ley line, the Port Tack ley line, and Noakes has got Smeg boxed in there. Nice thing about coming in on the port tack ley line is it gives plenty of time for the crew to settle in, have a bit of talk about what they're going to do downwind. You know, if you come in on the starboard ley line, then you've got to do that tack just before the mark. You know, it just adds that little bit of pressure you, you might not need. Yeah, and Smeg won't be too concerned yeah, about yeah. Any, any of this, no, Pete, you they're know. Not, no, they're not far off at here, this yeah. ley line. Yeah. But he'll be just thinking, I'll just hang around here and yeah. let it play out. A second place is good enough. When you're leading the regatta, as he is pretty comfortably. Come on, Sean, not far off it now, mate. No, he's well sure, past okay. it. Yeah, he's three, crossed. two, one, there you go. They were listening to us, there they go. Smeg tax as well. So... Those forehead hands had better step up to the mark, yeah. setting this shoot, haven't they? Further back in the fleet, I think it'll be Shore and Partners will be third. And then Andrew's probably fourth, Pete. That right-hand side, I don't know whether it paid that well. Boats that went right into Nielsen are struggling coming back out. They don't look very high at all. But meanwhile, we're on the race leaders. 17th at the JJs, brought to you by the, the winning group for the Bill Miller Memorial Trophy today. And the race sponsor is the Royal Oak Hotel and Noakes leads. Around he goes. So the second race of, in which they have led Peter the windward, at a windward mark, shall we say. So you can see that when they're around the mark, they've gone straight for the jibe set in onto that north shore where Noakes did so well. Jibe set means that you just jibe and then you set the spinnaker on the other side without stating the obvious. But it's always a decision about that because um, sometimes too, you know, for the viewers at home that don't sail, 
you've got to think about what side you want your spinnaker on because if you do a windward set where it goes up on the windward side, it can actually be quite hard and quite slow. So you might consider when you get to the bottom mark what side you're going to drop the spinnaker on. So they they've split, which is interesting. Yeah, well, sure. Partners. Well, firm. Again, which yes. which Winning side would you have gone, Adrian? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm a north. I'm the northern shore. Even though I live on the north shore, <laughs> in a northern easterly, you go the north shore. Yeah, but it does seem not like the eastern the Monty, shore. Not those eastern pressure up the top here on the on the other shore to me. But anyway. But downwind, though, you, 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 this, this particular, you've got to look for those lanes of wind, you know, yeah. because, uh, because if you miss one, neither shore helps you. You know, it's all about pressure. So, so well, the, well, look where the bow of the Noakes is. I'm sorry, viewers, off in the, off in the distance. We're travelling with Smeg. Smeg on poor jibe now. And, and that was a very nice jibe, too. That was executed beautifully yeah. because they just, uh, they just spin a cup back against the rig. Sheeted on three strings. I can say, Peter Shipway, that the Noakes has got a good header down to the white light at Shark Island. Not on screen viewer, sorry, but away in the distance. Sailing pretty deep. Kitchen Maker's made up good progress there. He's gone round in sixth position. And Bert, the Yan bird, and then Yandu. Yeah, they've done well. So Mike Kennedy's in there. He's pulling up the halyard. Fang Warren got the tack line or is it the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. And there are Royal Oaks around and next round will be tech two. Adrian, we're gonna, send, we're gonna sentence you to three laps in the 18 on the main sheet, okay? <laughs> the super cut was hard So enough. tech tech two, uh, who's had such an up and down championship, he's now in 10th spot. See, they're doing a windward set tech two. That's, but they did a good job, that. Yes. Because that's normally quite hard. Heritage. The only jibe set was on the Smeg, and the, he's converging back with Noakes sailing about halfway down this long run back to Clark Island. Meanwhile, we're on shore and partners running into Steel Point. They're third at the moment. Downwind, Noakes still leads narrowly. That's a nice shot there of Yandu and Royal Oak, both heading in towards the eastern suburbs. It's always interesting to look too on these boats how the crew can figure themselves. See Bert, Bert and Bear there standing quite far apart there. You know, some of the other crews will be right packed together, all three of them right back down to the, the wing. You know, everyone's got a different sailing style. But generally it's better if everyone's closer together. So there's a kitchen maker, Jordan Gertis, Lachlan Doyle and Tom Quigley. So Andrew has picked up a couple of places up that uh, beat there. Do you think? Yeah, they'll be close to shore and partners in the winning group. Yeah. So that Down puts the them in fourth. Is Smeg. It's Smeg and Noakes at the moment. A lot of jibing down here. The, uh, but there's Andu. We're chasing hard down to be in third place. They're probably not third yet. Shore and Partners and the winning group. They're third and fourth at the moment. In the distance with a white spinnaker, just going behind the red spinnaker is no sailing.
Looks like the wind's filled down into this bottom mark on the course, which is good. Around about 14, 15 knots. The, in, the tide started to come in now. It was low at the start and now it will be starting to come in maybe more significantly. We'll see in a moment, Smeek coming into the picture from left of screen, converging with Noakes, who's on port. And I think Smeg will be behind Noakes. No, just in front. Okay, Smeg leads narrowly. Noakes had to sail a little bit hot to get around the back of this. Yes. <laughs> so they're all the, almost bow to bow. Well, that goes to show you because they split jives at the top mark. Yeah, so what's that show? And <laughs> neither side paid. No. no, well, they've traded the lead back, Adrian, you know? Yeah. What a great overhead shot of Smeg there. Isn't that look terrific? Great work by the drone boys. Absolutely flying. Probably not far off a jive. They're, they're getting ready. There they go. They're lovely. All good. Yeah. A fair bit, fair bit to play for here, Pete. Being able to be one boat length in front of the bottom mark are pretty important because there's no, you know, two clearing tacks, you know, 0.6 of a mile or whatever it is of, pins of pinching the Bradley's head. Let's get, see what happens. Could get a bit ugly for you. Noakes has jived, but he's not in any uh, great pressure here while Smeg is rocketing in. Well, everyone on Smeg's one at JJ, so they should know what to do. Well, you'd think so. You'd hope so. <laughs> so. Noakes now getting the pressure. Noakes probably on the lay line, but Smeg has got one more jiving in, and they'll be clear ahead. You'll Noakes. see them in a moment. Noakes Smeg. is early. Yeah, Noakes is underlaid. Smeg will have a better shot at this. Absolutely, Noakes is underlaid. See, Smeg being conservative there. Breezes. Yeah, it is dropped out down here, down this bottom mark. You can see that yes. there's only, yep, quite only soft, isn't it? two yep. on the, only one on the wire, really. Yeah, still close. So we've got one more beat to go back to Bichols, then Two more spinning around to the triangular course now, around Shark Island and to the finish. Smeg leads. She's the champion leader, championship leader at the moment. So you know it's about time to pull it off, Pete, don't you think? I think so. There's Trent Barnabas getting that shoot down without any issues at all. And Shore and Partners roaring in with a red shoot. So Shore and Partners did a good job on the jive angle. Yeah, probably some points there to they dropped that spinnaker quite early there, Sean sure Connor. Partners. They're, they're yep. Interesting. Maybe they're a little bit below lay line. Yeah, but Adrian, as you know, opposed to sailing with apparent wind, doesn't it? Not square run. Anyway. And do have held. Oh, winning group leaving it a bit late here, I think, girls and boys. Wow. Oh, yeah, Andrew's going to get inside them. Yep. Yeah, they just, uh, winning group just left that jive a little bit too late, so and Andu were able to uh, get a more accurate lay line Good and job, come around Andrew. inside. Nice and tidy. And that might be pretty expensive for winning group. Yeah, got a... No easy lane out of there with Shore and Partners stacked up in front of them as well. So that's Sam Newton dropping the spinnaker on winning group. Next will be um, the kitchen maker. In sixth spot. Yeah. And then absolutely screaming in will be Yandu. That's Tom Quigley dropping the spinnaker on the kitchen, kitchen maker. maker. Yandu has made up good progress, good positions down that run. And following him will be the bird and tech two together. Tech two's an early jibe. Yandu's done a good job there of catching up some places. John yep. Winning, yep. senior, with Mike Kennedy and Fang Warren. They had a very tidy drop around that mark. Bird and oh, Bear bird put, bears a bit late. Pushing their luck a bit yeah. too, Pete. Uh, Tech Two's caught up some places down that run as well. Yeah, he's got him in the bag. He's good to go. Tech Two and then the bird. 
That's Lewis Brake, who's the forward yeah, hand on oh, tech two. Big one, boys, on the bird. A bit ugly as Finport run, rumbles around the outside of them. It's Tom Clout dropping the shoot there on the bird and the bear. No, Johnny Warren. Uh, jo sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here comes uh, Johnny Walton. Adrian. No, oh. blue. Oh, okay. He's Johnny Walton's so yeah, forward yeah. hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Royal Oak has a little fall from grace there, Pete. Somehow didn't see what happened, but uh, yes, yeah, so he dropped back a bit. But they're all on starboard, laying up into Bradley's head. What's the breeze, Adrian? About. Oh, I think it's up now. Fifteen so, knots. Fifteen yeah. plus. Which is nice. It was forecast to come in 15 to 20 by the late afternoon, so it's like it's going as forecast. The sky is clearing slightly. Is the cavalry coming in? The charging cavalry. Bing Lee on the shoot is the Queenslander, then Vintech behind him, and behind them Birkenhead Point Marina. So from Vintex, Tom, um, they're from 49ers. So Tom sailed in the Youth Olympics. So it's nice to see the uh, people coming through the skiff classes, 49ers, 12 footers up into the 18 footers. They're all the pathway classes. So, so Adrian, I met uh, Lewis Brake's mum yesterday and she corrected me gently in relation to Lewis's little yachting career, which is showing plenty of promise. He was in a 29er oh. um, with uh, with Charlie Wyatt when they were very young, and then separately in a 49er, and went, then he sort of bulked up a bit, and for a while was training in a fin. <laughs> so now back in the bow of the mighty Tech Two. So everybody in the fleet really is heading now to that Bradley's Head, which is on the north shore of the harbour. Yeah, Adrian, what would you bet now? We won't see too many people crossing to the east. I, I wouldn't say so now. The tide's coming in um, and, you know, the north shore paid up the last beat. The wind's filling in. Yeah, and the, though looking up, we see the leaders are all on port. I think of... any gains to be made will be downwind uh, from the top mark around Shark Island into the finish. So, a little bit of a... Let's see, a bit more pressure on the left here at Bradley's, that's for sure. But this is the third lap to, you know, some crews... You know, it's a long race, this race, so... Where you might just see a few little fumbles. Yeah, three two mile beats against the tide is long enough, isn't it? Yeah. That's why it's, this regatta is such a, a hard regatta to win because you've got to be over so many different wind conditions and so many different course configurations across a number of wind speeds and you know, windward lures, boat handling, but also the long legs in this race. You know, you, you, it's, it's really quite a, a, a hard regatta to win because of being across all the, the different wind speeds and strengths and configurations of the rigs itself, as well as the courses. Adrian, we'll call it an ensemble of performance. How about that? <laughs> Finely tuned, if you want to get musical. Yeah. Oh, Tech 2 coming back. Wow. So John Winning putting a loose cover on Tech 2. And Tech 2. Oh, the oh, tech it's just two. a problem there with Tech 2. Yeah. It's just like they the almost half decided to attack and change their mind. Got the wobbles up there. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, a manly ferry is just... No, I think the gym sheet came out of the cleat, Adrian. Oh. Turning the corner at uh, Bradley's head, bound for manly. But he's down speed, Pete. He has let, slowed right down. So it's maybe a skipper that knows uh, sailing and maybe giving a... 
Skiff's a bit of a passage around him, but anyway, the race goes on. There are a number of former 18-footer Skiff sailors who are captains of the uh, ferries around the harbour. Always like to give the Skiff sailors a wave. And Andrew, what about the crew weights at the moment? Uh, what's the optimum weight that most of the crews are setting themselves up with at the moment? Do you know? Well, they, they all reckon that you need about 250 now. With the more adjustable rigs that they've got now and the improvements in the sails and the spars, that is, number is creeping down. It used to be 265 was thought to be optimal, and now you'll see, say, Tech 2, for example, and um, Shaw and Partners down, getting down towards 250, 245 even. Yeah, so that's just an average there of between 80 and 90. You know, when you look at some of the, the skippers in the park, they're not huge, so that means that there's a couple of big big other crew members. Have you seen hungry. Lewis Brake and Jack McCartney standing side by side? <laughs> yeah. That's who I just had in mind, actually. Uh, exactly right. Yeah, no, Louis a big boy. And Jack's he's racing Greyhound 67 kilos. There's Andrew. He's vying for third spot here. The boat's been very quick upwind. The breeze now, fifth, good 15 knots. A few more white caps appearing, maybe 16 knots. All going in towards Chowder Bay. The whole fleet. No one's risking that right-hand shore, the Nielsen Park shore. But... So that's Andrew Marcus, Ashley Jones, Cam Gundy and Jerome Jamo Harrison. Uh, but do you think they've got a chance of getting on the podium? The, they're currently thirds 21, fourth 25, and then 26 and 26 is fifth and sixth. So they're, they're equal with Shoren partners it's at the moment. It's all very close there. It's very close. The drops will really... Start to play a bit of action here. So here's the maybe this is the race within the race starting here. Andu and Shore and Partners, fifth and sixth spots currently sitting overall. And their drops are very similar. They've both got a drop of 10. Very close on points. This looks fairly nice, consistent breeze here. That'll take the pressure off for for Smeg when they go around the top mark or whoever leads his shore and partner, they're probably in third. Yeah, Smeg's got a pretty good clamp on Noakes group now. Yeah, so yeah. right into Chowder Bay. This is where Noakes made a big gain last time, the second beat up, but right in Chowder, Smeg has tacked right on Noakes's gas. But we're on shore and partners coming out in towards the middle of the harbour, Nielsen Park in the background. Nice shot, the boat looks good. Nice accurate steering. So interesting, the helm's there looking around. Sometimes upwind, the forehead hand does a bit of strategy. I always like to have the forehead hand involved. They're a bit more free to look around too. That's Jim, Jim Colley, yeah. who's the helmsman on Shore and Partners. And Adrian, just for a bit of calibration, that will be one of the flatter mainsail setups in the fleet. Halfway up, there's final beat. It's a Beachel boy. Smeg leads. Noakes sailing will be second. Shore and Partners probably in third spot as they tack across now to come back to winning group and Andu. So that was a nice attack from Shore and Partners there. All three left the wing at the, almost the same time. Straight out on the wing on the tack on the other side. There's so much you can lose in attack. It's so important to go out and practice and practice. Well, Pete, it'll be interesting here to see Shore and Partners coming back to cross or cross behind Noakes. Next cross, next boat off the other shore will be winning group. But uh, the gap up to lead is about one minute by the look of that, yep. They're the two leaders going across on port. It's a real dogfight at the front. 
And Noakes has got some legs there. <clears throat> Breeze just up a bit. So that attack from Noakes probably wasn't their best. They're just a little bit slow getting out on the wing there. Now what's Smeg going to do? Go back with him? No, nice pressure here, Adrian. 15, yeah. 16 knots. Well, that, that'll take the pressure off these top leaders because they'll be able to just sail a nice yeah. conservative Sp run. They don't need to take any risk. The Quick. pressure should be consistent all the way to the bottom mark. Not many changes in direction, significant changes anyway, as they tack now. But Shark Island won't change. No, uh, They'll have no. to be on their guard there. They will. Yeah. So Smeg... It's gone back partly probably because there's a ferry coming up the eastern channel behind us. But that's oh. just a comfortable loose cover also on, on uh, Nug's group. A very courteous ferry driver. He's taken the eastern channel to get away from all the skiffs. And there's the leading pack, Smeg. To the left, as we look, is Shore and Partners, who's crossed ahead of Andu. And I think the winning group have probably got themselves into third, or have they? No, they're pulling behind Shore and Partners. So it's a very close battle for third. That's the Western Channel wedding cake, Western Channel pile on Sydney Harbour. We'll see if Sean put his money where his mouth is and he can pick this ley line from that far out. I'm sure he can. If he goes for it, the problem he's going to have, then Smeg's going to sit on him and gas him all the way in. It's a fair way out. He's in the middle of the Western Channel, Noakes. Yeah, it might actually pay for him to come back a bit short, Adrian, yes. so that that doesn't happen, yeah? Sometimes you can be lucky here in this non-nor'easter and you just get that little lift that gets you up there. You can see a few gusts coming from, from up at Manly. Well, in theory, Noakes should have a small gain here, shouldn't, shouldn't they, Adrian? Well, Coming from the left, yeah? Yes, yep. yes, they've got the opportunity to get a lift in. Well, there they've tacked. Are they just tacked? That was a good tack from Noakes when it counted. He'll be tight on this ley line. And it makes it cross him pretty easily. Yep. They'll just go up. A little bit of extended tack. There he goes. Going to try and lead him into this uh, the visual boy, which they're both laying quite comfortably at the moment. They'll have a little adverse tide pushing them. Yeah, that's a right pretty comfort left. comfortable lay in this, though, Pete. It is, yes. Yeah. Smeg's got the bow down a little now and is good pressure. to accelerate. Good pressure. Got good, good 15 knots here. So they're almost bound for home. This is the final windward mark. What some people probably don't know is this is quite a shallow part of the harbour where we are at this here. We're just in behind the sow and pigs and it's only four metres deep. So it's easy lay for me. Adrian, boats. you never ran aground in the maxi boat here, did you? No, no, I haven't. But I was always on the lookout. But my but I did have a capsizing that in foot and my mask got stuck in the mud. Okay. Well, you know exactly how deep it is, right? <laughs> that was an easy lay by both those boats. Smeg leads. Okay, there he goes. Oh, it's a good little gust. Gets the boat, gets the job done. That forehead hand just arm over arm after arm, just yeah, it's so nice, polished. Nice lead now. Bang, spinning a set. There I shouldn't say Nokes. that forehead hand. Trent Barnabas yeah. is that forehead hand. There's <laughs> Noakes. Noakes. Yeah, he's struggling a bit more with his shoot. Might have got a little bit wet in the drop or something. Yeah. And the battle remains for third between winning Shore and Partners and Andrew, but at the moment Shore and Partners will be third. They just crossed Andrew. And winning group rather, and, and Andrew's coming up. He'll be fifth, and then Yandu's got himself into sixth by the look of it. Gee, it's a good old stash for third and fourth and fifth, isn't it? Yes, there goes Shore and Partners. And they're all in the top six too. Jim, so Jim yep. Noakes is fourth overall at the moment. So a second will 
help well, them. Help them. Well, they're not second yet. Yeah, who knows? No, lot, not yet. Lot but a lot of tricks to play down here. They're just following speed yes. down, though. I think. Yeah, you might see, you know, Noakes here just going. Well, okay, second will do. Don't take any risk. Breeze has turned around a fair way, though, hasn't it? They've laid a lot. Less down the island, yes, on the, on the run compared to the previous, uh, the first lap. Now, w winning group who went around the top mark, you are just coming into shot now. They had a, a, a an unfortunate drop down there at the bottom mark when they overlaid the bottom mark, and and that's where it it it, it you suffer from it up the top because they had quite a slow set then. The spinnaker was caught up a bit, and that's because they obviously didn't have a great drop. And Yandu caught up there now, which is a really good for them. They're Mike up, Kennedy in there. They're up to the six. Tech Two will be next around in seventh with the kitchen maker. So, so Tech Two's had a good beat up there. Yeah, I wonder where that speed was earlier. Maybe his downrange speed wasn't as good as he thought. Because he's made up quite a bit of ground on, on this speed. He's struggling to get... To, He'd be pleased if he could wine glass there, but a very good set otherwise. Yeah, nice. Quickly, kitchen maker follows them around. Wall. No one's jived yet. Just as I speak, Speg and Noakes right in on Nielsen Park and Steel Point. They have jived to go out to get around Steel Point. The next jive angle will be critical, but meanwhile, we're on kitchen maker. The Caesar Stone bench tops. I'd, yeah. I'd like some Caesar Stone <laughs> bench tops. Keep talking about them nicely. Yeah, like I will. Get the sponsor to help you out. a really pleasurable part of the race this last run down to the finish you know you've got the whole harbour to yourself nor'easter flat water it's the reason you sail that in foot skips yeah noakes jibing first to seem jibe i think tech uh, behind him smeg has probably jibe yeah they're both jibe they're running in now to the shark island final turning mark before they run to the finish at clark island there's Andu in fifth spot at the moment. Just off screen there, what we all went ah about was uh, Andrew Helsman dropped his tiller and the jive and it just just, oh, look, just was a little fumble. Oh, look at Speg screaming down to Shark Island. No, Winning group going for an earlier jive there. Noakes above him. There's the four of them. Shore and Partners not far out of this. She's come right up to Noakes. And, and Noakes on the face of a beauty, Pete. Yes. And the same puff containing Smeg. Noakes still VMG running. Smeg squeezing to get up to the mark. A little, a little overlay perhaps. And Sean Partner's got, part got a ripper. Got a bit on too. Have to put the wheels down. But, but on, you can probably see in front of them, though, you can see the breeze is lightning Very off there. Light, they'll they'll yeah. always be okay. But winning group's going to have to do another jibe here, I think, Adrian. That's right. Oh. I mean, it, it takes a bit of courage to, to leave the jibe late, but you've got to do it in this northerly. No, it's struggling now. No, it's just got the bow back up. It's got that puff. The mark's just to the right of Speck, that yellow boy. So once they go around this mark, they've only got one more leg to the finishing line. 0.7 of a mile, Adrian. Probably not enough for too much to happen, but accidents oh. have happened, haven't they? Okay, Smeg, jibing early. 
And Andrew, what do you estimate their boat speed is on this league? What would you say was their oh, boat speed? We're, we're looking at like 16, 17 here. Just a bit over wind speed, Adrian, yeah. Shoring Partners is the one that's come into play here. They just left their jibe that little bit later, so it meant that they were three strings in pressure, and that got them right up onto the tail of Noakes there. Yeah, it's, a, it's effectively a VMG run, I think, though, Adrian, once you get dip past uh, the middle of Point Piper. Smeg certainly in VMG mode. Shore and Partners be fancying their chances, though, wouldn't they? Now, what Noakes got to do here is not come up to defend. Is there a difference in crew weight between Shore and Partners and Noakes, Andrew, or are they pretty much similar? Yeah, they're both pretty over the lighter end of the spectrum, around that 245, I think. Well, so Shore and Partners are going to get hurt here a bit more by the ferry. The ferry's just coming into screen, and that could take wind out of shore and partners just for about five seconds enough for, to get no now noakes bow in front yeah so noakes is now just gonna squeeze down onto the point vmg absolute maximum vmg run smeg's run out of wind ahead of them yeah very, very soft exactly They're charging at smeg well pete that might be the ferry residue correct smeg just got the pressure again now be a few nerves, but they look, they're about uh, 300 metres, 200 metres from the finishing line, Smeg. They've got the pressure now. Traditionally, it's not where people would jive this far from, You'd leave your jive till the, to the end, to the finish. Oh, they've got a Nice gust now, Smeg. He's probably not quite laying the finish. But he's got enough in hand. You would think this race belongs to Smeg. They've been there all day. And another first-class performance by Michael Coxon, Ricky Bridge and Trent Barnabas. They're really putting their stamp on this regatta now. They'll win this really take a commanding lead on the point score. Smeg now about 100 metres from home. The clear leader. He's probably just laying the pin though. Probably a jibe and in, I think. One and in. He's coming yeah. now. There's the crew getting ready to jibe. And a bit more pressure coming down too, Pete. Yeah. Lovely jibe. They took that jibe a little easy, which is good. They didn't run wind tip to wing tip, just to be safe. It was a cruising boat jibe, Adrian, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bang. But nicely done. Nicely Lovely. done. Well done. Well, why, why would you put yourself under that much yeah, pressure? Yeah, no, safety for really it. Really, yeah. Hard to beat now for this championship. Noakes will get second. That's a great effort from those boys. <laughs> Solid all day. And Shaw and Partners, another sure. good sail as well. So Noakes are currently fourth overall and yeah. and Partners fifth Pl overall. Plenty so. of breeze now, sky clearing and a lot of white caps appearing. And uh, and Partners. And the next they race will be for fourth. <coughs> Got it. So Noakes is going to move up, Adrian. So and Partners, that was Jim Colley, Sean Connor and Harry Bethwaite. Fourth. And so they're now tied and I think they got back in front of Burden Bear. Bird and Bear haven't had a great race, unfortunately. Uh, that was the understatement of the 21st century today. Winning group just holding off Yandu. Okay, winning group fourth. Sorry, Andu. What am I saying? Andu. And Tech 2 got in front of Yandu down the yeah, run. Tech so. 2, a late, somewhat of a comeback. They'll finish sixth. Yeah. And they're currently sixth overall, so... So getting another six won't help them too much, will it, Adrian? No. Yeah. Tech two have done well to get up to seventh. Yeah, they'll still be scratching their head about the second half of the first beat. <laughs> oh, well. They obviously chose a nice lay line down there. Went through the finish line in one. Yeah.
And, and Yandu, John Winning Senior, Fang Warren and Michael Kennedy. Michael Kennedy, a great 12 foot skiff sailor, as well as 18 footer sailor and offshore bowman. A masochist by definition. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's what you need to have your head red if you're an offshore bowman. There's, there's seventh. Yeah. Or a 12 footer bowman, Adrian. Yeah, <laughs> both. Yes. It's got the right DNA. Yeah. Finport next. They've had a day well below their standards, I would say. Yeah, next that's bit. Keegan York, Max Denter, and Phil Marshall. They were the ones that started at the boat end. Yeah. And never got out of the hole. No, they they struggled to find a lane up that first beat. Yeah. And uh, they just ne didn't ever recover. Well, Adrian, they started the regatta with two thirds, and it looked like they were kind of in that comfort zone, you know? Mm. Well, they haven't subsequently repeated that, so. So they're currently in eighth place. Their drop's in an 11th. Yeah, they have, I don't think they've been on the riding level, but they've had a couple of days where they found no wind on a few occasions on the lighter big rig days. Okay, Finn Port around in eighth, finishing. And Bird and Bear, they're currently third overall, so they won't be happy with this. Uh, the Bird and then the today's sponsor, the Royal Oak. And that's James Doran, John Walton, and Tom Clout. On the bird, there they go. So just, it's very provisional and unofficial. I've just done a very quick calculation on the points following today's race. With the win by Smeg, they will be, this is dropping your worst performance after seven races. They'll be on 11 points. The next will be Yandu on 23. Yandu winning group, Pete. Yandu winning group, yes, sorry. Yandu winning group on 23. Then the following will be Noakes sailing on 27. And we have to give a special shout out to a vet heritage coming in yep. here across the line. And then Shore and Partners 29, Bird and Bear 30, and Andu 31. So the battle really is for second and third in this championship at the moment as we're watching Noakes Blue fly across the line in 11th spot, followed by the Kitchen Maker. So the Noakes Blue is Yvette Heritage, Rory Cox and Oliver Scott Mackey. And the Kitchen Maker, Jordan Gertis, Lachlan Doyle and Tom Quigley. So it's very congested, Andrew, for second and third at the moment on the points table from a winning group on 23 down to Andu on 31. There's one, two, three, four, five boats there. Yeah. But uh, clear ahead is Smeg. And really, they've just got to keep their nose clean tomorrow and the title no. could be very much wrapped up no, then and you, there. You would expect oh, on, it. on Saturday, I'm sorry. They'd be able to do that, yeah, on Saturday. But the forecast is a bit odd still, so we'll see. So I can tell you what the forecast currently is for Saturday. Uh, well, they're saying it's starting, you know, north to northwesterly light, and then it goes north to north easterly 15 to 20 knots during the day. So it so, could be very similar today. That's a puzzle, isn't it, though? Yeah. And then on Sunday, the Sunday is the interesting one because it's – North North Westerly 10 to 15, and then it, it the southerly change comes through. Currently on the maps I look at, it's it's in the morning, so that means it could be a it's quite could strong, be quite isn't it? strong yeah. southerly. Yeah, mm. it could reach up to 30 knots during the day, so that'll that'll be interesting. The heavy weather sailors can go out there and get their teeth into it. Yeah, it'll be nice for a change, of course, too, after two days of nor'easters yeah. to have a southerly course on Sunday. But Adrian, Ooh, yeah, I, I've been watching the models. The, the next race on Saturday, for some period, the suggestion was that it'd be northerly below eight knots for the whole day. Now yeah. the, the models are wiggling around a bit about about all that, but um, that would be an unusual day, wouldn't it? Yeah, just it just really depends what the high pressure in the Tasman does. Yeah, that's right. Because because that, that's what's pushing the northerly winds along the New South Wales coast. Yeah. Okay, well that's all ahead of us for the weekend, but. Today, we've seen another first-class performance from the boys on Smeg. Michael Cox and Ricky Bridge and Trent Barnabas, they were very good winners. 
And that's Ilve Pedro coming in, coming Pedro in. Vizzoni, Josh Marks and Paddy Bannon. Noakes second today, Shaw and Partners, the winning group, Andu, Tech 2 6, Yandu 7, Finport 8, Bird and Bear 9th, the Royal Oak 10th. So, Adrian Kahalan, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. We've certainly enjoyed having you with us. And uh, Andrew Buckland, as always, your uh, insight is uh, very interesting, especially the temperature out at the airport at Canterbury or wherever we were. That's, that's the very relevant. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, Pete, how hard it was blowing in Wellington, yeah. New Zealand this morning. 30 right. knots, brother. Okay. 30, anyway. 30 knots easterly. All yeah. right. Easterly. Enough. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so we'll be back on uh, Saturday for the six, uh, eighth heat and then the final heat on Sunday. So, Jimmy Bury, thank you for your masterful captaincy of this vessel and a lot of dodging and weaving between the craft today. Another terrific job. And Chits and the camera boys and the drone boys, fantastic photos and pictures today. So that's all been brought to you by Sail Media. And today's championship, as the whole series has been brought to you by the winning group, we'll see you back here on Saturday for um, the second last heat and all the... Plaudits today with Smeg, who clearly leads the leaderboard. So thanks for your company. I'm Peter Shipway, and we'll see you on Saturday afternoon.